Good morning. Hi, Melody. Hi, Josie. Hi. Hello. Hi. Thank you so much for um, joining me this morning. Uh, so today I have Melody, who is one of our um, uh, senior BDM from the UK team, um, who is also pregnant and has a, a, a little boy at home. So she has to jungle with a lot of different stuff, but you will tell us more about this later. And Josie, who is part of the UK team as well, um, one of our SDR, um, very creative, very innovative and really good at our job. So I'm super excited to have you both, to have like two superstars joining me this morning and learn from like how you guys are coping with the situation. So cool. do you maybe like, I don't know if you want to start, if it's uh, Joe or Melo, do you want to, it's your third week now being remote. Um, how are you guys feeling? Um, I'll go. <laughs> Uh, I think it's pretty up and down. I think we'll just take every day is different, but I think I've surrendered to it a bit now. Um, I'm just about adjusted. I think it's really nice saving some time on commuting so I can wake up a little bit later, start earlier and finish earlier. I do find that by mid afternoon, I really have to go outside and go for a walk or a run. Otherwise I lose focus. Um, I'm definitely missing seeing everyone and laughing around in the office because that is a big part of our kind of culture at work. Um, but adjusting and just, it is what it is, taking it day by day. Okay. What about you, Melody? Yeah, I think like I echo what Josie's saying, like uh, I thought I would not miss the commute, but I'm even missing the tube now, which is... <laughs> <laughs> interesting i think that like the first week was an adjustment week for me in terms of uh, um getting a bit uh, uh, a more firm schedule on how i wanted to structure my day uh, in order to be as productive as as you are normally like in, in the office um and uh, it was a bit of a test and trial week i'd say and then uh, once uh, you are in the second week you have a moment of down probably because you miss people i i think that like echo about what josie was saying i was missing the team we have a lovely team it's nice to spend time together we eat together so i was missing that social aspect um and then I, I guess that by week three you have more of a structure schedule and you know what works and what doesn't work but i definitely agree with josie that getting outside and get a bit of fresh air is vital to keep you sane mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah no i agree um i've even like um uh at the beginning i was kind of i'd say you know you dress up like oh, just like not like i would normally go for for a day in the office more like comfortable and and now i'm like actually no i want to wear like i'm wearing a shirt today oh, like, yeah. it's not iron but <laughs> that's the beauty of working from home but i'm like i don't care i need to dress up the same way i would normally do so i just feel like i'm starting my day and i'm i'm being active otherwise i start feeling a bit depressed i feel <laughs> so it's I'm, good I'm not quite yeah i'm i'm definitely still wearing comfy clothes but um i'm not quite wearing my work my work gear yet but <laughs> i might get there <laughs> well i guess the thing is like i know so anyway we don't all in the industry generally speaking people don't wear like exactly. to corporate clothes anyway so it's always pretty much comfortable i guess what we're wearing i'm not wearing jacket yet i'm not pushing this <laughs> no <laughs> so i think i'm gonna suit jacket hi guys good morning um no i'm not doing that um, okay, so um, Melody, would you be able to share maybe, um, you know, in your day-to-day -day job, like as a as a salesperson, how you how you finding it, what's working and what's not working for you? If maybe that's gonna help, like some of the people who may listen to this. Sure. Um, so definitely, like, we're all living in this surreal situation, and we all need like to adjust to it. Um, all businesses. Um, so um, I guess that like, why is working? Uh, uh, why I, I needed to change a bit the way that I was working. So starting from as a salesperson from my prospecting. 
before was done uh, quite a lot via email and uh, via calls, like speaking directly with people. Of course, now like people are not in the office, so you can't call them anymore. So you need to become a bit more creative around it, like how you are targeting them. Uh, and uh, I think LinkedIn is a great tool um, to do so. Um, and uh, and also be a bit mindful of how you're targeting them because it's a difficult situation for everyone and mm -hmm. it's not all about business but it's also about like acknowledging that we are all human beings living um a tough situation that can be tough not just uh, business-wise but also psychologically um yeah. then, uh, i think that um structuring my day i'm gonna still have my meetings we are quite lucky as a business that we work online and uh, that's all you can do now, go online and uh, shop online if you need anything. So um, I guess that uh, in terms of uh, uh, demand, uh, it's still quite quite positive. Um, so I would have like uh, my meetings with merchants showing like how NOSA works and, you know, have that consultative approach that we always have at NOSA. Um, and then uh, uh, it's, it's hard. I, I mean, there's sometimes being in the office uh, and having face-to-face -face meetings also motivates you and uh, you, new ideas comes up. So you need to find a new way to be creative, I guess. Um, yeah. And uh, reading articles and seeing like what other people are doing and do a bit of research, that certainly helps. Um, and I guess that this is like how mainly I'm, I'm structuring uh, uh, my work days and try to, to find find ways to 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 make it work okay that's good um and did you i know you're saying that it's harder to reach out to people because obviously people are working from home but did you find that um quite a lot of people are actually transferring their um you know office number to their uh, mobile number or it's not really a thing yet some people are definitely doing that like we are personally. Um, some people are transferring their office number to their mobile number so that they can keep working at the, at the same speed. So definitely like some people are doing that. Um, there is uh, in, in our industry at least like there is more the, there are lots of people like willing sharing their mobile number to right. speak with share. Um, and uh, a lot of people are honest also like if it's uh, you know an industry that is not doing particularly well at the moment uh, mm -hmm. they will Will tell you and and that's also okay yeah yeah okay yeah i guess like it's yeah test and learn really and just adapt to it. And learning like i think that this first month that we're all in it is all about testing and learning the reason yeah. for science about it is checking yeah and being respectful to what everyone is going through because uh people may may be affected at a different level exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. okay okay that's very good um what about what about you, Josie? Um, obviously, as as you are, you have a lot of like uh, you know cold calling usually that you do, and like um, your the way your way of working has been impacted um, a lot. I know that you've been trying a lot of different things. You've been quite innovative and in trying to think outside the box to reach out to people. Um, could you maybe share some of that, like the things that are working, and maybe also some stuff that are not working? Yeah, sure. So I think my main like overarching approach is just to make sure and I, I'm oh we can't hear you anymore here we go that's the beauty of being live online <laughs> she doesn't hear us um yeah. we've lost you yeah okay can you hear me now oh, you're back you're back okay I'm back. okay where did you get up to? What was I saying? <laughs> you were just starting. You basically said a few words and then you cut out. Okay. Um, so I think, yeah, my main approach is just to be really personal um, and make sure that every piece of outreach is really one-to-one -one, um, and personal for that business and that, that person because everyone's going to be experiencing different things. And I think now more than ever, if someone gets something in the inbox and it's a mass automated email, it, it looks like you don't care and I think right now people are going to want to feel like you're genuinely trying to help and you actually do care which is I think the approach that we're trying to take um so I've I've really moved away from email um and any outreach which I'm sending to more than one person and I've started using uh LinkedIn and prospecting videos on Vidyard 
So I didn't realize that you can send voice notes on LinkedIn, but um, I've been doing that quite a lot because I think you can convey your tone um, and empathy much more effectively doing that. And I've been making vidyards where I will run through a prospect's website and show them uh, some areas where we, we could help optimize it um, to get the most out of the traffic they are getting on the website for um, prospects who are in a vertical, which are doing really well right now. Um, but overall, just being a bit more empathetic, having a call to action, which is much softer um, and just trying to be helpful. Um, and also sharing content or initiatives that our wonderful marketing team is doing, like our, our five week pub crawl, um, which just helps create a sense of community and isn't asking anything of a merchant, but it's letting them know that we're there. Um, but I'm definitely still learning. It's still early days. I'm still working out what works well, but um, I think doing anything which is a little bit different and which is really personal and empathetic um, is probably going to work um, most effectively. And it's funny because it's, it's very interesting because actually it's already stuff that you guys are doing, right? But even in a normal time you will do like personalized um you know direct messages and so on we we've never really done we've done the video videos before we've never really done the uh, voice note i didn't know you could do voice notes on linkedin yeah. but i think it's better you but it's quite interesting um but it seems pretty normal anyway that we should always be trying to have a more like personable approach when we're reaching out to people you know we're yeah. doing business with people and like I get, you know, targeted by <laughs> suppliers like for marketing tools like every day and like quite quite a lot. You guys know because usually they call in the office. Um, yeah. And you know, when you when you have a lot of different tools that can do the same things and they roughly cost the same thing, you, I'm always gonna go for the person I like the most because exactly. you work with people um, and you wanna you wanna be surrounded by like you know nice people to work with when the tool can be, you know, just reach your expectation basically so i think it's actually super super important to uh, have this approach when you're really trying to listen to what people are going through and like you know yeah. really showing that you care and you're not just here to actually do business but you're trying to make a difference for them um yeah and a good task person should always be doing this anyway covid 19 or not that doesn't that shouldn't reach yeah anyway. yeah of course um i just think now more than ever um it's like the the essential only way to do it yeah. um yeah. but yeah and and also there's been um there's a great community of sdrs um a lot based in london but also across um i mean all over the uk and there are a few different sdr networks organized by um one there's one organized by wiser which is a recruitment company um and we've got a network on linkedin and we've been doing some um, kind of conference calls all together, sharing ideas. There's yeah. always messages going up in the WhatsApp group, just sharing best practices and helping each other. So that's been um, really, really Is useful. That, can anyone uh, join this? Or? Yeah. So I guess if you know someone in the group already, you can ask to be added. I think it okay. started off maybe 10 20 people and now there's 100 people in the whatsapp group amazing okay yeah. so maybe we can um we, i can just add the the links to the to the post if anyone wants to join that um yeah they can chat to you okay sounds good cool um thank you very much i also wanted to ask you melody because i know you know you've been at nosto for a while you one of the top sell like within the the company um but right now you're also going through a bit of a you know challenging time i guess because there's a lot of stuff going on at home and um could you share maybe how you're managing like being a parent and being pregnant and being isolated and like how you're doing all of that um it's it's challenging um it's to be to be totally honest like i could stay here and say like oh it's absolutely fine like you know but it, it's actually I can't do it all. i'm a superwoman <laughs> do everything <laughs> blah 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 no it is hard it is hard because like, so maybe uh, just, you could just uh, explain what's your uh, family context for the, for the people listening to this i'll outline now how 
So I am uh, uh, seven months pregnant. Uh, I have uh, a little boy already who is six years old, uh, who is out of school, as all the kids in the UK. All the schools are closed. Uh, so he's at home and he needs to be homeschooled. Uh, I live with my partner, Josh, uh, who is currently self-isolating in a room because we, he might have uh, the corona. Um, so I'm basically, uh, for the last uh, uh, 12 days, I've been doing it all, like so the homeschooling and uh, everything that you have to do as a parent at home to make to make it work and uh, try on the, on the other side, like to work and uh, be productive. So it's been quite exhausting to, to be fair, <laughs> but um, it is doable. Uh, I feel that uh, you need to have uh, a schedule for homeschooling. That will be my tip for, for parents, but I'm, I know that already like by week two, all parents are doing that, like a schedule, like, like if they were at school, what they need to be doing. Um, also set up some boundaries, I think it's very important, so that you, if you're having a meeting, uh, you can't be disturbed, and they should know that. When the door is, is closed, they shouldn't come in. Uh, this is quite hard to enforce sometimes, but there is always a bit of bribing, chocolate, or things like this that you can use. Uh, that works for me. <laughs> uh, or uh, uh, I think that like now, one other tip for parents, uh, Amazon made uh, Audible uh, free for all the kids to use. Oh, that's so really good. I didn't know. Smart. That's really nice. So they can listen for free to stories. And that actually is a great way to have, you can have a meeting, they listen to a story. You don't feel as guilty because you're not placing them in front of an iPad or the TV, but they're listening to a nice story. So that, that helps with the parenting uh, guilt as well. But it's definitely very, uh, very challenging because usually when you are, even if you're working at home um, and, and that's your usual setup, uh, you would have your kids at school so you don't have to think about it. Um, yeah. Another mental load that you have on you and uh, mm -hmm. on top of um, I just feel that it's quite of a stressful situation, not just for adults, but also like for kids and they it needs to be explained and it needs to make it to, they need to be told that everything is going to be okay. And uh, this is a, we are, it's a momentarily situation. It won't last, uh, um, it won't last forever. Um, definitely being pregnant as well <laughs> it's, it makes things feel a bit heavier. <laughs> so you'll you're be a bit more time. <laughs> <laughs> quite a lot um, heavier probably quite a lot heavier um i guess uh, being at home and eating even more like that uh, but um yeah yeah um it, you can make it work i think like the, the the two main points is like setting a tight schedule and setting up boundaries um and then like you can make it work for kids and when you are not on the screen then you just spend time with them without thinking about work like so yeah. trying to um, it's also for yourself, uh, which for me on the first week it wasn't. Uh, it wasn't like this. Like I was working until midnight, uh, and then I was shattered the day after, so I couldn't. wasn't able to concentrate. I'm still finding a trying to find a balance, but yeah. um, I guess that like uh, uh, by the end of this week, probably I will. I will nail it. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 you know what? If you don't nail it, that's fine too. Like I've realized that. Um, a big learning for me, and I shared it briefly last time we were talking with James and Becky uh, with this like working from home indefinitely situation. <laughs> um, that actually it's okay not to have it perfect and not to perform yeah. every day, and like um, being nice with yourself, like you know, not exhausting yourself trying to do too many things. And we can't truly be 100% as efficient as when you're working in an office with people, I think that is, even though we're used to doing like um, online conferencing and like our business is so ready to be online, like all of that is fine. It's not really, we are not struggling with this, but I guess the, there's an impact of like not really seeing people, not being with your teammate at all. And that that has an impact on your sometime motivation or you feel a bit done or, or you may misread, you know, someone's email or Slack message, you know, when that could have been like a conversation. And and that's okay. Like I've realized that actually when I feel like I'm tired, if it's 5.30 p.m., it's fine. I'm going to stop working. 
when you know mm -hmm. usually I may be like pushing this a little bit like another hour or, I'm like no if I feel like I'm I've, I've had enough today then that's that's the end of my day and I think it's also very important to manage your mental health and and just listen to yourself and take time to go out and just yeah do things to kind of breathe <laughs> both like physically and mentally because otherwise um it's too difficult and obviously it's even more so for you know someone like you Melody who is going through tons of armor and like looking after six years old you know <laughs> while working but also available for anyone else who may be with their family or on their own or doesn't matter like we all have to be like super careful and um making sure mental health is like is good because that's yeah. that's most important i think yeah yeah i agree with you about you know we can we can work remotely very easily we've got the right technology like theoretically we can do it so well we're really well equipped it's just not being surrounded by everyone all day and i think um it's it's the everyone's there together everyone's at work everyone's motivating each other but when you're on your own um in a room by yourself all day i think getting having that motivation to be 100 percent like normal that i think that's what's most challenging it's not actually about communicating with each other like we can do that we've got slack we've got all the video tools it's actually yeah. having that like drive and push when you're not yeah. surrounded by the team I, I think that for me is definitely the most challenging yeah yeah, yeah me too I agree. I agree, Jesse. Yeah. yeah. But we're getting there. <laughs> yeah, we're getting there. We're, we're lucky to have a good uh, support system, I guess, like between us and, and and hopefully, you know, sharing those tips, even if it seems like very simple and just just being having a chat, really. But hopefully that can help some of the people as well. Then 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 we're winning. <laughs> yeah. It looks like I feel that like we're quite lucky that we work for a company that from the very start when uh, COVID-19 started, like they shown the genuine interest for, first of all, uh, a side of the business for our well-being as uh, as employees. And I yeah. feel that um, that also makes you uh, accountable like for, for the company as well, because the company really, really cares for you. Yeah. Uh, you want also like to, to give back to the company. I feel that like that does yeah, agree with that. And we are, we are quite lucky. Yeah. yeah. For that yeah agreed good okay well i think we've been chatting for uh, for a long time already it's been over like 20 minutes so uh thank you so much to both of you uh for agreeing to do this um a bit last minute you know spontaneity is new <laughs> <it's not true. laughs> um well yeah if anyone listening if you have any question you know like last week just reach out to either to us by email or you can just reach out to me on linkedin or whatever works for you uh, and we'll try to help you uh, as much as we can if you want to have a bit of fun join us on thursday 4 30 pm uk time uh, for a pub quiz <laughs> yeah bring your own drinks and come to the nostal arms and have a drink with us <laughs> we'll be there <laughs> cool thank you so much to both of you and have a great day thank Thanks. you Claire. bye bye